stuff. Yeah, please, please go ahead, uh, Professor Hara. Okay. Okay. Thank you for participating in the AG Basic International Youth Workshop today. Hello, are you okay? My name is Kazuhara. I'm from Nagoya City in Japan. We'd like to thank Asian Youth Group for giving us a good, wonderful opportunity today. Today, the number of resistance was 203 zero participant in 49 countries, so many countries. Thanks again. Today we focus important point for interventional US for beginners. So focus the beginners. I invited two special speaker for trainees. Dr. Nasari Posavasi, Sirira Hospital, Bangkok, Thailand, and Mitsuhiro Kida, Professor Kida, Kitasato University Hospital, Tokyo, Japan. They are very famous doctors, so everyone knows them, of course. So if you have a question, please type your question in Q&A, okay? So first speaker is Dr. Natalie. Her nickname is Duwe. Duwe. She's a super expert in the field, a super good teacher in Thailand. Her topic is important point for training to start USFNB. Please, Dr. Natalie. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Nontali Pauswasti. I am the president of the Thai Association for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy and program director for the WGO Endoscopy Training Center in Bangkok. I'd like to thank Professor Hara and the AEG for the invitation. It is my pleasure to be part of this course. My talk is entitled, Important Points for Trainees to Start EUS Guided F&B. The essential factors for successful EUS Guided F&B include aspiration and suction techniques, needle selection, tissue handling, and processing. Based on FNA-related literature, we have learned about different aspiration methods, including fanning, door knocking, woodpecker. We also learned about different suction methods, like standard suction using negative pressure, stylus low pull or stylet retraction, wet suction, and no suction. A fanning technique allows tissue acquisition from throughout the lesion. Here is a video demonstrating the fanning technique. Here's a target lesion with fanning. The um, needle trajectory aims at different areas throughout the lesion. You can see in a second here that um, the needle is coming. You make sure that you see the sheath coming out and here under the EUS view. You can see that you can um, aim the needle to different um, area. Conventional um, uh, fanning technique requires that you aim the needle to four different um, uh, quadrants. Each quadrant you um, uh, do four strokes. And um, you can achieve the um, fanning technique by controlling big wheel up and down as demonstrated here. And uh, you can also use a little bit of elevator, but I would uh, suggest that you avoid using too much of the elevator as it may bend the needle. A randomized control trial has demonstrated that fanning technique provides better first pass diagnosis compared to standard technique. Door knocking method as demonstrated here, can be performed by advancing the needle in quickly, allowing the needle to hit the stopper, creating a door knocking sound, and pull back slowly during the, each stroke. The woodpecker technique requires moving needle finely and rapidly in the lesion. It is good for a small lesion of less than one centimeter. In terms of the slow pull technique, a multi-center randomized control trial comparing slow pull and standard suction 
shows that both the、um, techniques are comparable, and based on this study,、um, two passes were required. Here's a video demonstrating the、uh, slow pull technique or capillary technique. So, based on the current literature, fanning technique is recommended. Door knocking method appears to increase cellularity.、Uh, that is based on、um, one randomized control trial. However, it doesn't affect the diagnostic accuracy. With、um, FNA, three to four passes are required if rapid on-site evaluation is absent. But but only two to three passes are needed for F and B needles without rows. Stylet is not needed. In terms of suctions,、um, it appears that standard suction provides better yield than no suction, and that is based on four RCTs. And the wet suction also provides better histology、um, compared to standard suction, although it's not. Uh, quite popular. A stylet slope provides similar di diagnostic accuracy to standard suction, and that is based on one randomized control trial and one prospective trial. Here are the data that we have from F and A needles. What about aspiration and suction techniques for F and B needles? Well, RCT have been conducted to assess the optimal sampling techniques for F and B for reverse bevel. A randomized control trial has been conducted to compare slow pull versus suction versus no suction techniques. The slow pull techniques provides better cellularity,、um, being seventy-two percent compared to sixty and fifty percent with the suction and no suction, respectively. Also, suction、um, appears to yield more blood contamination compared to other methods. However, these three techniques are No different in terms of core tissue adequacy. For the twenty、uh, gauge forward bevel um, suction, um, different suction techniques have been compared.、Um, uh, slow pull versus standard technique、um, has been studied, and based on the study results, no difference in terms of diagnostic yield and blood contamination. Uh, another randomized control trial, which is a head-to-head -head comparison,、uh, comparing different needle types using different suction techniques, including no suction, stylet slow pull, and suction. The results show that the Francine and fork tip needles using no suction and stylet slow pull provided better diagnostic accuracy、uh, for a single pass. And also, it provided.、Um, uh, I'm sorry.、Uh, these two types of needles provided better diagnostic、um, adequacy or tissue adequacy and cellularity for a single pass.、Um, however, when the suction is applied, it seems that the、um, cellularity and adequacy of the forward bevel needle increase. So, therefore.、Um, The results seem to be comparable in terms of tissue adequacy between these、uh, three different、um, needle types. And based on this study, different suction techniques may be required for each F and B needle type. For reverse and forward bevel, suction technique is required to obtain best cellularity, best diagnostic accuracy, and best overall outcome. For Francine and fork tip、uh, needles, slow pull method provided the best outcomes across the board. So again, I just want to emphasize that、uh, the、um, data that we've seen here for the F and B needle is a little bit different from the F and A needle. So I think that、um, we're probably going to need to、um, uh, fine tune our techniques a little bit more when using. F and B needles. Moving on to needle selection, different F and B needle designs are available. The first generation of F and B was true cut needle, as demonstrated here, and the second generation is the reverse bevel or pro core. The recent designs include fork tip or shaft core, 
Friends in design or acquire and forward bubble or the twenty gauge Procore needle. There are many studies, including more than twenty RCTs, more than ten meta analyses, studying the、um, overall outcomes, comparing the FNA and FNB needles. Most of the studies were performed with the twenty two gauge Procore reverse bubble. And、um, uh, the studies were done for both pancreatic and non-pancreatic lesion. The largest meta-analysis comparing FNA and FNB was published in 2020. It included 18 randomized controlled trials with over 2,000 patients in the study, all done with the 22 gauge Procore needles. The results show that FNB is superior to FNA in diagnostic. Accuracy, tissue core, and it requires less passes. These results are applicable for both pancreatic and non-pancreatic lesion. This study also compared different types of FNB needles. The results show that pool diagnostic accuracy is better in fork tip, Francine, and forward bevel compared to the reverse bevel. However,、uh, the authors stated that specific recommendations cannot be made due to the heterogeneity. Furthermore, a meta-analysis comparing FNA and FNB using Procore twenty-two gauge needle has been performed in subepithelial lesions. The study included ten. Um, RC, uh, ten studies total, six being RCT. Over six hundred patients have been included. The results show that FNB is superior to FNA in terms of the、um, tissue adequacy, also more tissue core. If FNB provides better diagnostic accuracy and requires less needle passes. What about other type of FNB needles? Several studies have been conducted to assess the diagnostic accuracy of the 22 gauge Francine needles with and without the presence of rose. Here, I'm summarizing to you、um, different studies that have been performed over the past few years, as included here, and、um, many of these studies have performed with. The macroscopic on-site evaluation, or MOS, and、um, most of the studies consistently show that the diagnostic accuracy of the Francine needle ranges anywhere between ninety-four to ninety-seven percent. Most of them have performed with rows, with three studies performed without rows, and MOS have been implemented in the study. MOS has shown to be indicative of tissue adequacy.、Um, a large prospective multi-center study with over six hundred patients also showed that cytology plus histology is not superior to histology alone for the diagnostic accuracy when Francine needle is used. When compare different types of needles.、Um, Based on multiple RCTs and meta-analyses, although this is not head-to-head -head comparison, but the results show that the twenty-two、um, and twenty-five reverse bevel are comparable in terms of diagnostic accuracy. The forward bevel, which is the twenty-two gauge, however, is superior to the reverse bevel. The Francine and the fork tip are comparable. And、um, the frenzy in the fork tip and the forward bevel are more superior to the reverse bevel. However, as I mentioned earlier, due to lots of heterogeneity and low quality of studies recruited in the meta-analysis, the、uh, authors cannot draw a, a, a specific recommendations for、uh, the needle types. Having said that, though, I think、um, this is a very imp、um, important study here by. Um, uh, Verder Julu and Banks Group published just last year.、Uh, this is、um, again head-to-head -head comparison between four different needle designs using 
three different suction techniques, including suction, stylet retraction, and no suction. As you can see here, as highlighted in red, Francine and fork tip appears to have better diagnostic accuracy regardless of suction techniques with um, p-value of less than 0 0.001. If you look at the um, um, overall uh, sensitivity and specificity and diagnostic accuracy, um, the Francine and the fork tips appear to be better um, than the reverse and the forward bevel for all lesions. And also, um, this seems to be true when they did subgroup analysis for pancreatic neoplasms only. So the francine and the frog tip appear to be um, more superior than the um, uh, reverse and forward bevel. So um, moving on to the last factor that would improve the diagnostic accuracy of FNB, tissue processing. Traditionally, rows had the biggest impact with increased diagnostic accuracy and decreased needle passes when EUS FNA is used. However, recent data show that rows does not affect results of FNA in large volume centers. So this is very interesting. With the use of FNB, macroscopic on-site evaluation has been introduced um, or has been used more frequently. Um, what is the macroscopic on-site evaluation or MOS? It's essentially the um, uh, visible inspection of the tissue that we performed right after we received the tissue uh, from, the, um, uh, from the patient. A study by a Japanese group, Iwashita, had um, reported that tissue length of visible core of more than 4 millimeters is indicative of tissue adequacy. And the row of moles in the absence of rows in both FNA and FNB is expanding. A randomized control trial comparing moles versus no moles um, using 19-gauge needle, FNA needles, without rows um, in solid mass has been conducted. And the results of this study show that MOS provide comparable diagnostic accuracy but require fewer passes compared to conventional FNA without rows. So the use of MOS is uh, definitely expanding. What about the row of rows in FNB. Another important study has been published in endoscopy just last year. Uh, it's a randomized control trial comparing US FNB alone versus US FNA with rows. And um, this is a non inferiority study. They randomized over 200 patients one to the EUS FNB arm and the other one to EUS FNA. And um, 112 patients um, completed the um, US FNB arm and 120 completed the US FNA with Rose arm. The results show that FNB alone is not superior to EUS FNA plus Rose. It requires fewer needle passes, shorter procedure time, and excellent histological yield. However, US FNB alone is slightly more expensive compared to um, FNB with rows. And um, the authors concluded that given the scarcity of rows in many areas, US FNB will likely become the preferred modality of solid pancreatic lesions at most institutions. Another important randomized control trial have been published in the same in the same year, which is last year, in gastroenterology. This study compared EUS FNB with rows versus EUS FNB without rows. And again, this study is a large study, multicenter, recruiting patients of more than eight hundred. And uh, 400 went to the EUS FNA with rose arm, 
400 went to the U.S. F&B alone without rows. The results of this study basically show that U.S. F&B alone without rows is not inferior to U.S. F&A with rows, and you can also see here that they are comparable in terms of diagnostic accuracy, um, tissue core, and adverse event. And also, F and B without rows requires less procedure time. So I think with that, um, we can conclude that fanning different aspiration methods can be applied for the aspiration techniques when we use F and B needles. Standard section can be applied for reverse and forward bubble. But stylus slow pull can be used for all needle types. Again, I just want to emphasize that different needle types may require different aspiration techniques. The stylus slow pull can be used for all needle types, but if you're going to use forward or reverse bubble, a standard suction may be required. In terms of comparison between each needle type, what we have so far, it appears that Francine and Fork Tip perform better than the forward and reverse bevel for sure. However, some meta-analysis suggests that these three needle types may be comparable in terms of diagnostic accuracy. I think this is something that needs to um, stay tuned for, and um, more study is going to uh, is going to be needed. Most should be applied always as a good alternative for rows. Histology preparation with formalin fixation is preferred when we use F and B. From now on, what will happen? I think you're going to see more of the role of US F and B in molecular diagnosis. What next for F and B? In the future, I think we will uh, learn more about the uh, refinement of sampling techniques for each needle types, and also we're going to see more of the role of molecular analysis through US F and B. So definitely, F and B is taking over F and A. And I hope that um, I can give you some glimpse of how we can utilize the F and B the best using different techniques. And uh, with that, I hope that um, we will see each other in person again in the near future. And I'd like to thank uh, for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Natri. Very pretty animation. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, question one question from audience. Use guided tissue acquisition for comprehensive genomic profiling is performed in your institute. Well, uh, as of now, we have not performed molecular analysis through USFMB yet, but we mm -hmm. are in the process of setting up a program that we can use. Um, samples from F and B for molecular analysis. Yeah, we'll okay. stay tuned for that. And for me, so just my personal question, I want to know your favorite needle and your favorite techniques. Just a personal question. Right, so my, my favorite needles um, as of now is uh, the, um, uh, the Francie needles. And the only reason that I feel that I like Francine the best is because I get really good yield from that. Uh, one thing that I, I don't like about the Francine is that I feel that the sheath, the control of the sheath, sometimes it gets very stiff and we have to adjust the sheath quite frequently. For that, the 20 gauge pro core from Cook is better from that standpoint. Um, and as far as a technique, I generally use a slow pull or stylet mm. retraction technique, especially for the first pass. I don't use suction at first, but then after I finish my first pass, I would do most to evaluate the specimen. And if I feel like I don't have enough specimen, then I would add the suction. Yeah, so that, that I've been practicing that way for the past four or five years and i'm actually kind of happy to see the results from Cheyenne's group that with the francine needles they would um 
they would suggest using the uh, slow pull or uh, uh, silent uh, retraction techniques. And for the pro core, a little bit of suction may be added, which is quite the same way as what I found in my practice. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Professor Kida, please comment. No comment. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, I prefer the uh, pro core at the moment mm -hmm. and with the uh, suction. That we, we start with the, this manner in our department. Right. You know, I, I have just, uh, I have just tried the, uh, the new needle from Olympus and I feel that it's pretty good too. New needle? Um, well, it's, it's, it's new to us, but it might not be new to you guys. It's uh -huh. the 22 biopsy needles, which just, you know, came to us within the past year or so. I thought that was pretty good too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to that. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's new to us. It might not be new to you. Yeah, because you know, like you're in Japan, as soon as the needles came out, you might've used it already. But for us, I think it just got distributed to Thailand within the past couple of years. Right. Like, what? Yeah. Mm. Biopsy needle. It's probably old to you, um, Hara. Oh, look the kid, do you? No, I don't know. The, 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 the F and B needle, the side hole needle. Oh. Hmm? Old, old one. But uh, Maybe anyway, the Maybe it's the old one, but yeah. Punctuality, the, I prefer the only first one. Punctuality. Punctuality, yeah. Edition three is best. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, Easy it's Shot Three is the one I'm I'm, I'm mentioning. It, Easy Shot mm -hmm. Three just came to Thailand not too long ago, mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. Oh. Yeah. so therefore the, we uh, we always use uh, uh, Easy Shot Three for the interventional US. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Natri. Thank you. Okay, I go ahead with the next session. Next speaker is Dr. Mitsuhiro Kida. Professor Kida contributed to the development of interventional EUS in Japan. So he is a respected person by all Japanese endosonographers. Now he is also president of AG. So his topic is important point for trainee to start EUS guided scissor drainage. Please, Dr. Kida. What? Thank you for kind introduction, Chairman, and ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to have a lecture in front of you. Today, I will be talking about the future direction of the distal bioduct metal stent. According to the international consensus, self expander metallic stent preferred over the plastic stent for the unrejectable barigunan to. Flora, this is wrong. Maybe I have to do. Okay. I have to. Sorry. Thank you for trying to. Hara, sensei, miete mas ka? Kyou sarete nai desu ne. Kyou sarete nai. Hai.
あ消えちゃいましたね。OK。From question from Dr. Nakai. Thank you for question, Dr. Nakai. Uh, Dr. Nakai asked the question Any special technique for a small region less than one centimeter? His question is a small region and the FNA. Natalie. Should I answer now? Okay. Yeah, for a small region, I, I, I use woodpecker quite a bit. I, I, I adapted from the Japanese friends. Mm. And as I show you on the video, I, I found that. Um, that that helped for small lesion. The other technique that I've used for a very small lesion and hard lesion is to um, do the um, um, the door knocking technique. I would put I would measure the size of the lesion and I would set the stopper just right where I want it, and I would jab the needle in real hard and slowly pull it back within the lesion and then jab it back again. I would keep doing that for about you know like 10 times it's very difficult for small lesions to do fanning technique so fanning is probably um if you can apply fanning it's good if you can't then um uh the jabbing the door knocking technique would be good yeah my, my comment is that if small region needle is also small is better and right. fna yeah, fna is very sharp so maybe fna not fnb right maybe if small right or if you're going to use fnb a 25 gauge would work as well yeah. mm, 25 gauge fnb is very small right so maybe not so special you, you don't you don't get anything yeah, the, yeah so the user 22 fna uh-huh 25 fna is punctuality is very special okay so if you less than five millimeter fna 25g is better Less than five millimeter, five millimeter is going to be yeah, very yeah. difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Right. Oh, now, Professor Kida is ready. Flora. Yes. Can you start? Uh, 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 Professor Kida, can you? He's sharing the screen so he can start. Yeah. Yes, please, Dr. Kida. Not yet. <coughs> okay, another question. Okay. No? So, Natalie, another question. Okay. Okay. Ah. Can you hear? Yes, but oh, okay. Can you hear? Ne? Yes, According, yes. according to the revised Atlantic classification, the pancreatitis is divided into intestinal edematous pancreatitis and necrotizing pancreatitis. The, each one is divided uh, two types uh, according to the less than four weeks, the more than the four weeks. The APFC and the pancreas pseudocyst. And necrotizing pancreatitis, ANC and one. Okay, so the indication of the PFC drainage and necrodectomy, the, after the infection and the symptomatic, then the, these uh, pancreatitis indicates the transmural drainage and necrodectomy. So, of course, infection and symptomatic is the indication, then the Medical treatment such as the antibiotics is the first step in the management of the patient for the PPC and one. Asymptomatic PPC and one can be managed by observation. Infected PPC one is diagnosed on the basis of the clinical signs such as the high fever, laboratory data, and the presence of the gas in the fluid collections. The, this is a Professor Horst Grimm who reported the first case of the U.S. guided pseudocyst donor in 1992. This is a checklist of the uh, cyst donor. Clinical findings should be the consistent with the PPC and one. 
you have to deny the pseudo analysis and uh, cystic neoplasma by CT uh, and so on. Add all the PPC and one time to mature for, if possible. PPC one should be the in the close opposition to the GI wall less than 10 millimeters. Avoid the puncture of the gastric biases and the portal hypertension. Before or after the transmural drainage, you should confirm the PPC one has connected to the MPD or not. This is the procedure of the transmural drainage. At first, puncture the cystic place by the 19 gauge and insert the guide wire and uh, dilate the fissure by the electrocautery or balloon. After that, we insert the two guide wire and uh, insert the pigtail stent. After that, we insert the ENCD tube. This is a case of the pseudo cyst. Uh, there, are, there is a big uh, pseudo cyst in the left upper abdomen, more than the 30 centimeter. At first, we try the ERP. The, the, we cannot reach to the body and tail. Then we switch to the US guided drainage. At first, we have to check the uh, vascular structure at the puncturing point. After that, we insert the 90 gauge. Then, then punctured. Of course, this is easy shot three. Puncture. After that, we feel the contrast a little bit. Then we insert the guide wire. We use the general use the Visualize two. Then I recommend you to uh, insert the guide wire as, pos as much as possible. Then after that, we dilate the fistula with the fendula dilator. Generally, we use the seven French at first. After that, we dilate the fissure by the balloon. Generally, we use a six millimeter balloon in diameter. After that, we insert the 10 French spindle dilator because uh, using the spindle, 10 French spindle dilator, we can insert the two guide wire. Then after that, we insert the two guide wire like this. Then we insert the pigtail stent at first. After that, we insert the ENCD tube like this. Then the after one month later, the pseudocyst almost disappeared like this. According to the uh, literature, the success rate is 90 to 100%, efficacy is 73 to 100%. Concerning about the complication, the complication rate is around 8%, including perforation, bleeding, infection. And there is two type of the uh, echo endoscope. The generally oblique viewing echo endoscope is standard. Now we generally use the forward viewing echo endoscope because the forward viewing echo endoscope has the advantage, easy to puncture and put the device in less resistance. 
Stent releasing is reliable due to the front view guidance, but the disadvantage is the unstable in the stomach and also the no guide wire fixation devices. There is a randomized study with the forward viewing versus and the oblique viewing and for the treatment of the pseudocyst drainage. And they conclude there is no significant difference in the procedure time, safety, and efficacy. The concerning about the uh, puncturing devices, we generally use a 90 gauge uh, easy shot three and, and another uh, options. So this is a guide wire for seeking. Uh, we generally use a 0 0.25 visual guide two. Using the straight one, even we rotate the straight one, we cannot change the direction, but uh, we generally use the angle type because we rotate the angle type, then we, we can change the direction like this. あの、ちょっと、ま、しょうがないです。行きますよ。えっと、ウィ、え、デルタ、え、ダイレーションデバイスです。ダイレクトルコテリー。アンドメカニカルダイレーター。アンドバルーンダイレーター。そう、this シストロトーム。アンダー、ディスイズオンリー3フレンチ。ダンダンダッツミンスダウィクアグレートベリースモーラーザンダコンペアトゥザ6フレンチシストガストロトーム。ディスイズアレンバルン。ディスガイレンバ
After that, the lot of the fluid comes out. And after suction, we identify the proximal side of the axials in the stomach like this. So this is just after the one uh, notch with axials. Axios uh, deployed the suitable position like this. So because, uh, this is a, uh, Axios need a space for the uh, deploying. The, at least we need a six centimeter is necessary for the deploying. The, that means that smaller uh, one cannot be indicated. And also the solid component is, uh, this is sometimes problem. The, according to the Boston instruction, they recommend the less than 30% is. According to the recent meta-analysis the, on the clinical success, for the PPC and for the one, metal stent is better with significance. On the adverse event, and also the metal extent is uh, significant with, and uh, concerning about the stent migration, there is no significant difference between the metal extent and the plastic extent. And also the breeding, no difference, plastic extent versus the metal extent. And uh, also the, uh, on the perforation, Plastic stent and metal stent has no difference. There's another meta analysis concerning about the overall one resolution. Metal stent is better with significance. And also the lamps is also the better with significance compared to the plastic stent. They conclude the Overall resolution and the number of the procedure is superior to the uh, plastic stent with the uh, lamps. This is a complication of the bleeding. The bleeding occurred in the first three weeks, especially the first one week is very high, like this. Band group uh, reported uh, these results compar comparing the metal extent uh, versus plastic extent randomized control trial with 60 cases. The number of the procedure, treatment success, and the clinical uh, overall adverse event and readmissions, not a significant difference in the two group. However, the procedure duration and stent relate is uh, procedure duration is of course the with lamps is very shorter. However, the stent related adverse event higher with lamps, and of course the procedure cost is uh, higher with lamps. The complication is around 32%, the including the body syndrome and bleeding and the stent-induced biliary strictures. They uh, conclude the one can be treated with a similar clinical success and adverse event. And uh, however, it takes longer time to treat the one with the plastic stent. Adverse event related with the stent were higher with lamps. Cost of the procedure were higher with lamps. So band group also the reported another report the, using the uh, 188 patient and uh, predict they uh, investigate the predict of the adverse event. It's stent removal after the whole weeks and the PFC size is less than seven centimeter has a predictor of the adverse event. And the adverse event it includes the delayed breathing and the body syndrome like this. So on the Torikun Nasan, uh, I, I, it's very difficult to pronounce that they, uh, they uh, conducted a 
randomized studies, uh, study, the early uh, drainage and uh, standard drainage, more than the four weeks. Then the renal failure requiring the dialysis, respiratory failure requiring the ventilation, shock requiring the vaso press pressure are higher in the early group, less than four weeks. But it's improving is similar to the standard group like this. And it looks very high, but uh, or, uh, recovered very quickly. Mortality is not so uh, and a uh, little bit high than the median range of states also the, with significance. And the median range is uh, ICU is also uh, high uh, with the early group. However, the, concerning the population, the standard group is higher with significance like this. But anyway, the uh, mortality is similar to the, uh, not, not so different in between the, these, these two groups. Then the, they conclude early intervention were more often performed for the infection and organ failure with no increase of the complication, similar improvement in the organ failure slightly need for the surgery and relatively low mortality. Early endoscopy drainage with, without necrodectomy should be considered when there is a strong indication for the intervention. So he is a Hans, Professor Hans Dyfat. He, he reported the first case of the necrodectomy in 2000. When should we perform the necrodectomy for the one? The initial step is the uh, pactanes or endoscopy drainage. Necrodectomy should be considered if the this drainage uh, is not effective. Then we perform the necrodectomy through the axios like this. We generally use the five nail uh, five nail forceps like this. We don't use the normal uh, forceps because we, uh, I'm afraid to catch the artery. Y using the, this five nails uh, forceps, even though we catch the uh, artery, the artery will sweep out. After the uh, clearing the inside, we remove the axios through the endoscopic channel. Then this is the fistula. Then we insert the plastic stand to keep the, this, this fistula like this. We generally use a two pigtail stand to, in, in, in order to keep the fistula. According to the literature, uh, technical success is 100%, clinical success 88%, uh, recurrence rate is 7%, mortality is 4.4%, including the breathing, perforation, air embolism. Right? Air embolism is very uh, fatal, but you, you should uh, employ the CO2 inflation. And also the Sometimes we uh, employ the percutaneous necrodectomy because uh, through the endoscopy route, we cannot, sometimes we cannot reach to the, some place. Then in this situation, we employ the percutaneous necrodectomy like this. The, in this case, we make a fistula from the left la lateral abdomen. Then we insert the endoscope from, from the left hand side. So combination of the therapy is important. Then, however, the, this is a uh, study about the comparing the endoscopic surgery versus and the percutaneous drainage. They conclude that both endoscopy surgery are preferable over the percutaneous intervention. 
further mode endoscopy treatment is uh, associated with uh, shorter hospitalization than surgery. So, but uh, this is concluded. The, this is a step up approach is, uh, schema. At what start the endoscopy drainage, percutaneous drainage. If inadequate, then they recommend the second drainage. Even though the inadequate, then video assisted retroperitoneal debridement. And finally, open necrodectomy. This is a step up approach. According to the step up approach, the, this is a result. Um, major complication of death is uh, less in the step up approach. MOF is also few in the step up approach. New onset of the diabetes is also few in the step up approach group. And also the uh, use of the pancreas enzyme is also few in the step up approach. The number of the uh, necrodectomy is few in, with the step up approach. Total uh, drainage of the procedure is uh, very, number is few in the step up approach. ICU, ICU admission is uh, few in the step up approach. And also the, that group is also reported the long term uh, follow up. The new onset of the endocrine insufficient is less with the step up approach. And exocrine uh, insufficiency also few in the step up approach. So therefore, the, at the moment, we recommend the step up approach at first. Then the, if we cannot treat, then we refer to the surgery. The imaging of the uh, pancreas uh, duct is imp uh, important after the uh, before transluminal stent is uh, retrieved. So ESG suggests that performing the MRCP of the main pancreas duct prior to the stent removal after the one drainage. How should this connect, uh, connect pancreas duct syndrome be managed, DPDS? ESG suggests that against the combining transluminal drainage with routine stenting of the MPD in patients with DPDS. And ESG, ESG recommends the long-term indwelling of the transluminal stent after the transluminal drainage of the one patient with DPDS. However, we have the, this is our report. We have the three case of the uh, perforation because of the pigtail stent in long-term indwelling of the pigtail stent. So the, Perforation occurred six months, 17 months, 33 months. So then, then maybe uh, we should uh, remove the pig cell stent, uh, maybe one year or six months. I, I cannot uh, have a certain uh, data. But uh, this is take home message. The USPPC one drainage is clinically feasible alternative to the surgery. Uh, PPC1 drainage with metal stent introduces a superior shorter duration of the procedure compared to the even transmural uh, mural drainage with plastic stent. Necrodectomy for treating the PPC1 is clinically feasible, but the complication rate is high, including the bleeding uh, air embolism. Routine stenting of the MPD should be performed in patient with DPDS. And we have to investigate when should we remove the these stent. Thank you for kind attention. I'm, I'm very sorry, I, I make a trouble. I'm very sorry. Hara Sensei? Hara? Yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I, I'm very sorry. No, 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 no problem. But now I not I cannot use the face video. Order. Order. 
そちらが何か止めてるみたいだよ。Okay, please try it again. Yeah, okay.、Uh, thank you, thank you. あれ、so... 俺なんでビデオが、ビデオが始ま<笑>ビデオが開かない。え大丈夫です、先生。ホスト側からビデオが停止したってなってるんだけど。フローラ、プリーズチェック。オッケー、プリーズ、プリーズ、メイクアクエスチョン。オッケー、オッケー。なあ、フォークエスチョン、ウィハラ。ファーストクエスチョン、フロム、モハメッド、イルハム、アブドゥル、プロフタキダ、イフユー、ディプロイズ、アクシオス、ディスタル、アプロクチマルフランチ、インザチャンネル。And finally, push out the axioms. In、yes. this situation, you need a full order or endoscope view or something.、Oh, yeah, yeah. But, and then generally, the, we, we control by the endoscope mainly. So at first, we,、uh, we deploy the distal end and then we release the proximal side in the channel. Then we little bit pull back, maybe little bit clockwise. Then that means a little bit pull back the endoscope, then a little bit push out to the st stomach, into the stomach. This is our manner. So we don't need a fluoro. Yeah, now of course、uh, we confirm the fluoro, but, uh, <laughs> but the mainly the endoscope. Yes. Next question, Dr. Shoishikawa. So, for the being scope and the oblique being scope, what is the difference? Which is better for the procedure? And, but, and, and、uh, according to my,、uh, this is my, just my private uh, personal uh, impression.、Uh, what we're doing is very easy to push, the, push something. So, and、uh, of course, the, most of the institution cannot have the what we're doing echo endoscope. Maybe, of course, generally, the, most of the procedure are done by the oblique viewing echo endoscope.、Uh, but, uh, Of course, the oblique view echo endoscope covered all things. But uh, uh, using the forward view echo endoscope, there are some、uh, the advantages, and there is, I, I believe so, especially the pushability, I think. Thank you. Oh, so many questions. Wow. So from, <laughs> from Professor Okno Nozomi, her question is、uh, Larmus is always better. Or just a shoot assist is a plastic stent is enough? This is a question. I think, I think, I think so. so then the small and the shoot assist is,、uh, I think, can be treated by the plastic stent. And maybe we have to conduct the clinical study to reduce the medical、uh, cost, I think. So we have to、uh, select, but、uh, as mentioned in my presentation, small、uh, one. Can be treated by the plastic stent. And also, the, sometimes the very、uh, not, uh, like an octopus shape, very, yeah, very small、uh, foot, like very un, unusual,、uh, not round one. That one is, we have to employ the plastic stent. Otherwise, we cannot treat the, if we insert the Uh, Axios, maybe we make the、uh, separation of that space. I think we, in this situation, we, we have to insert the several plastic stand, I think. Yes. So, so next question is、uh, for beginner, scope stabilization is sometimes difficult. So, any tips or something, please?、Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, at first, So, at first, when you puncture the target, you should make the very st stable position at first. That is important at first, if possible. But of course,、uh, in some region, we cannot keep the very good position. Of course,、uh, in, the, in this situation, maybe you,、uh, you have to ask the assistant to keep the position, keep the endoscope. That is also the important. Thank you.、Okay. So, last two questions. Dr. Kida, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> what, <laughs> is, what is next? Yes. So, in the necrosectomy, 
So yeah. sometimes very difficult situation to cut a necrosis or something. So what is the best techniques or something? And uh, concerning about the necrosectomy, at yeah. first, the more important point is the puncturing point. So mm -hmm. in this situation, the forward viewing echo in the scope is very important, I think. Because the uh, forward viewing, we, we generally perform the necrosectomy with forward viewing echo in the scope not oblique viewing echo endoscope. Mm -hmm. That means uh, uh, after, during the necrosectomy, the, that is very good. We can puncture the very good position for the forward viewing echo endoscope, for, for, forward viewing endoscope. That means it's very easy to insert. Mm -hmm. So with the oblique viewing echo a little bit change the position. So that is, that is also the, I rec my recommendation. And, uh, of oh, now, now the in Japan we generally use uh, perform the necrosectomy two or three times a week. So the, at the beginning, I <laughs> I mentioned the, just one hour and the three three sessions per week, but because of this is this is not no evidence. So maybe that we have to conduct another study for the severe cases, maybe we we have to uh, do the longer uh, necrosectomy or uh, one, two hours uh, at the beginning. Otherwise, uh, the severe patient cannot be treated, I think. So one hour is based on the data from the ESD cases. The, at the beginning of the ESD, the, there is some pneumonia after ESD. Therefore, the, uh, I recommend the one hour. Uh -huh. Okay. We have a final question from Dr. Nakai. Oh, Nakai. So, yes. <laughs> big, <laughs> MPD big, big yes, yes. MPD stenosis or disruption case. Finally, you remove US guided cyst drainage tube or not? Because MPD stenosis is sometimes recurrent. So, and uh, I, uh, I mentioned the last slide that we have the three cases. The, generally, the, now the uh, we recommend that uh, about one one year we remove the uh, pigtail stent. Of course, we have to check the uh, remained uh, distal part of the pancreas. That if there is a big part, maybe we keep we have to keep the pigtail stent. But that that part is uh, shrink to uh, atro become atrophy. Th then we remove the pigtail stent. This is our manner at the moment, but, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, this is also that there's no evidence. We have to, uh, you have to investigate uh, these uh, recommendation time for removing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so so many questions. Yes, okay. very sorry. I'm this <laughs> make a trouble. I'm no very problem. sorry. <laughs> thank you very much. Very good lecture. So finally. Yeah. I give a lecture about ES guided virial drainage. It's my great honor to give a lecture. Thank you for Asian US group. My topic is important point for trainees to start USBD. At first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Kazuhara. My institute is Aichi Cancer Center, Nagoya City, Aichi Prefecture, Japan. Many pancreatic burial cancer patients visit our center for diagnosis and treatment. Nagoya City in Aichi Prefecture is my hometown. Nagoya Castle, Regoran, Toyota Museum, and Ghibli Park are shown in this picture. If you come to Japan, please visit Nagoya City and Aichi Prefecture. This picture shows our members. 12 doctors belong to Pancreatic Burial Team. Young trainee visit our center to run interventional US procedure. We are also clinical oncologist, so we give a chemotherapy for the patient. 
Many students visit Aichi Cancer Center to learn EUS intervention. In this picture, Dr. Moraz performed ESBD. He came from Egypt. Now he is a good teacher in Egypt. He got Japanese PhD in our research center. Today's my lecture includes four topics. Simple procedure of EUS CDS and AGS. And stand selection, anatomy for successful EUS HGS, and finally, special dilator for difficult situation. At first, I introduce our easy and simple procedure. Recently, I really feel ESBD is not a difficult procedure. Maybe for expert, ESBD is easy procedure. We use a forward viewing scope for EUS CDS. And we don't need a dilator because metal stent is a very slim delivery system. At first, we puncture the CVD using 19 gauge needle, like this. After puncture CVD, we aspirate by juice and inject the contrast and insert guide wire deeply. Next step is a metal stent. This metal stent is so tapered, very slim, so we don't need a dilation. So at first guide wire, next is a metal stent. And finally, we put the metal stent in the bile duct and duodenum like this. This is a hard bearing scope, so very easy to see the metal stent like this. How about US HGS? Probably many endosonographers consider the technical difficulty in US HGS. Recently, we usually use a forward brain scope for US HGS. By that puncture with 22Z needle and insert O1 and wire. After 7 French taper dilator with side hole, the slim metal stent is placed. At first, I put clip around EG junction. This is a landmark of esophagus. I don't want to puncture trans esophagus. This is a B2. At first, we visualize B2 and puncture B2 using 22Z needle. After puncture B2, we insert guide wire deeply. This wire is O18 wire. And inject contrast, we can confirm the bile duct. This is a dilator. This dilator is ES dilator with side hole. We can aspirate through the side hole and inject the contrast measure. And finally, we put the metal stent. This metal stent is so tapered, so very easily in session. And open the metal stent in the bile duct and open, open the stent in the biopsy channel, like this. And finally, we push out the metal stent in the stomach. And we can see the metal stent easily because this scope is forward viewing scope. Next topic is stent selection. Stent selection is a very important point for successful ESBD. I recommended the laser cut fully cover metal stent because the mesh of laser cut metal stent is sharp. The gripping force is so strong, stent dislocation just after stent placement is unlikely to happen. After fissure creation, we can perform reintervention easily. So I recommend laser cut fully cover metal stent for ESCDS strongly. Plastic stent can avoid focal cholangitis and bile duct injury. 
prostate stent is useful for small intrahepatic bile duct. This is our case. The bile duct was not so big dilated, so we put 7 French plastic stent. After procedure, bile leakage was seen in this patient. Plastic stent is small bowl, so bile leakage happened. In my opinion, tapered chip, slim delivery, laser cut fully covered metal stent is ideal for EUSBD at the moment. Because easy insertion, no dislocation just after placement, easy removal after fistula creation. Even partially covered metal stent, we can't avoid focal cholangitis. Focal cholangitis usually appear distal part from puncture site. So important point is not partially covered part, just size of the stent. A partially covered stent is difficult to remove, so reintervention is also difficult. Smaller and removable stent is better. We recommend less than 6 mm stent. Removable stents are the most important for reintervention. Reintervention is very, very important for the patient. This picture is focal cholangitis caused by big bore metal stent. This complication is common in big bore metal stent. Basically, stent exchange is the best for reintervention. After metal stent occlusion, we use 11.5 French plastic stent. After fistula creation, big Plastic stent is safe. Focal cholangitis is not seen in the plastic stent. Maybe ideal stent is easy insertion, no dislocation, no bile juice leakage, no focal cholangitis, no injured bile duct, removable, easy reintervention, long patency. This is ideal, but now not yet. Next topic is anatomy for successful EUSHGS. Anatomy is also very important point. At first, we visualize the left row around EG junction. We can see B2 and B3. For safe procedure, puncture from stomach is very important. So we insert the scope deeply and use up angulation and visualize B2 and B3. After B3 puncture, we can see the guide warrior in the distal part in the EUS images. We can see the scope position and puncture point of B2 and B3. If you want to puncture B3, you should insert scope deeply and visualize B3. Question. Where is the best puncture site for successful EUS HGS? How about around here? If you put the covered metal stand around here, there is a possibility of obstruction both B2 and B3. So around here, not so good puncture area. Of course, it's not contraindicated. How about the puncture middle part of B2? Probably it's the best puncture site for easy EUS HGS. B2 is straight. So wire and device insertion is easy. So B2 puncture is the best. How about the distal part of B2? Puncture B2 Around EG junction is quite easy compared to other area. However, in this area, puncture root is usually trans esophagus using the oblique viewing scope. This picture is my bad memories. 
after B2 puncture from esophagus, pneumothorax and pneumoderma was seen. We could understand the risk of B2 puncture from esophagus after this case. He is Dr. Fumikyun, beginner of EUSHGS in our center. This is the first case for him. Now he trying to visualize B2 around EG junction. B2 puncture is very important point for easy EUSHGS. However, puncture site is esophagus. Now I try to visualize B2 from stomach. In such group deeply, use up angulation. Finally, I could visualize B2 from stomach. How about the puncture middle part of B3? Many endorsonographers usually select this area for EUS HGS. However, in this area, it's sometimes difficult to insert guide wire deeply. B3 is up and down in the left row as you see. So after B3 puncture, wire and device insertion is sometimes very difficult. He is Dr. Yan Chan, one of trainees in our center. This case is his first case for EUS HGS. He can't puncture B2 from stomach, so he selected B3. B3 is located a little bit deeper portion in EUS images. Finally, he could puncture B3 from stomach. After B3 puncture, wire negotiation is sometimes very difficult. In this case, we decide to repuncture more distal area as arrow shows. After enough injection of contrast, cholangiogram is very useful to decide the best puncture site. After repuncture, wire negotiation is still not easy. But finally, we could insert the wire successfully. Don't be afraid of re puncture. In this situation, double lumen cannula is useful to negotiate the wire. It's one of the troubleshooting method in EUSHGS. How about the puncture distal part of B3? This scope position is acceptable, but this position is usually not available. Very rare situation. This position is very common. After puncture around here, wire insertion to the proximal is quite difficult. A brush extent is probably acceptable, but not ideal. Finally, I mentioned about dilation. It's also very important step for difficult situation. Sometimes, bile duct is so hard, we cannot dilate the track, even tapered device, because very hard. So how to do? We developed a new redesigned drill dilator named Tornas ES. This dilator is very wonderful. After insertion wire, we just need clockwise rotation of this dilator to dilate the hard structure. After dilation, just counterclockwise rotation is needed. This patient is a pancreatic cancer patient. Now you can see very tight stenosis in the body of the pancreas. Now we use very tapered cannula but cannot pass. Now we use Dorio dilator. We just clockwise rotation this dilator. Can you see? Very easily dilate the tight stenosis like this. It's very useful dilation cannula. This is a ERCP. Can you see? 
and skip view insertion director and then rotation this director just rotate just rotation very easily finally we can put power extent like this this case is HCC cases so breathing from HCC and obstructive units we punctured B3 using forward bring scope wire is OY the wire and then we use the real director to direct the rocket so this angle is much bending but we can pass and we can direct the tract like this just clockwise rotation very easy very safe can you see the craniogram we can see the breathing from the tumor because uh, this tumor is HCC and finally we put fully cover metal stand in the base break this is a laser cut very tip by tip laser cut metal stand like this open from B3 into the channel and finally we push out the metal stand from the channel like this this slide is a take home message B2 puncture is the best for easy EUS HGS Covered metal stands are useful to prevent bile juice leakage. Newly developed drill director is useful even difficult situation. Visitors and trainees are welcome. If you want to visit our center, please mail to me. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much. And question? No question. Okay, Professor Hara, you... Hara. Yes, yes. Can I make next question? Yes, please. But uh, uh, because you use the forward viewing echo endoscope, therefore the it, uh, B2 is very best position. But uh, yes. for the beginner, you should mention the uh, using the uh, oblique view echo endoscope. Uh, there is the, the the chance of the uh, transtrachic uh, puncture is occurred. Uh, that you should you should mention about that. Yes. Uh, so for beginner, if you use the oblique view scope, B two puncture is sometimes from esophagus. So from esophagus is very dangerous. So at first, we put a clip around the easy junction. This is a landmark of esophagus. Mm. And then we try to visualize B2 from stomach. But if difficult, I recommend B3 puncture. No way, because safe, safe is important. Thank you. And also, the, I have another question. Then uh, mm -hmm. you use the laser cut to uh, full covered metal stent. Ha have you ever experienced uh, fragmentation with the stent during the mm -hmm. removing? Yes, uh, always, not always, but very common Be because very fragile, but no problem. Completely, we can remove. Mm -hmm. But braided stent is a little bit easy to remove, mm -hmm. but no way. No, no fragmentation. Yes, o always fragmentation broken. O o o always fragmentation. <laughs> so, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so. always. <laughs> Because very, very fragile. <laughs> yeah, you, no you, you, yeah, you are, you are very positive. <laughs> <laughs> so you said no problem, no problem, even if it breaks. No problem, no problem. Yeah, of course. Be, be, because because the uh, uh, fissure is completed. Yes. Okay. This is true. Well, well it, it looks me. it looks like you have many questions, but after you finish answering, I ha I also have questions. But you go ahead oh. and answer the questions. <laughs> yeah, do you direct from now? Maybe you can use 
from Olympus in Japan. So Professor Nakai questioned me, so how to use? So from Olympus, sale from now. Only in Japan or is it outside Japan as well? Maybe depend on Olympus, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but very good director. Yeah, but I cannot get money, of course. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, just I give an idea. Yes. Next is a. Oh, so the next question is a size of the bioduct for EUS HGS limit or limitation maybe two millimeter. Is a limitation. That's but very two millimeter small. Is, yeah very two from two millimeter to three millimeters very common because I use twenty two gauge. Not so difficult, but 90 gauge, a little bit difficult. So this is so different. So I recommend 22 G and O1 weight wire. But if you use 19 gauge, two millimeters sometimes very difficult. Maybe I, I cannot. So, oh, Professor, from Professor Nakai, quarterly director or non quarterly I recommend completely non quarterly of course, because I have experience of breeding and uh, some, some people reported the breeding. So quarterly is a little bit dangerous, but uh, you are expert, maybe quarterly is uh, maybe no problem, but you are beginner, mechanical dilation is better. I think so. The Professor Tetsuya Sato. Oh, oh, oh. So his question is a partially covered metal stent not prevent, just not prevent segmental cholangitis or something. So in my opinion, distal part from puncture site is co is cause cholangitis, you know? So partially cover part is a no problem. You know, after puncture site, this third part of the puncture site, this is a problem. But usually around this part is a covered. So if you use a partially covered metal stain, cause cholangitis. This is my opinion. How, how about the prosecutor? So I, I think partially covered metal scent is not so useful because very difficult to remove and cannot prevent chronitis. And uh, even if we use a partially covered metal extent, probably the, uh, it's very difficult to control the uh, suitable position. Therefore, the, sometimes the even employ the partially covered metal extent in this case, the occurred the uh, cholangitis, I think. Yes, I think so. And, and also the si si size is also an important point. The, uh, there is a, but, but you, you, generally the Professor Hala used a smaller mm -hmm. size, then yes. the, maybe the, there is some space for the uh, bile duct. So then the, he does not cause uh, cholangitis, I think. Uh, uh, most of the case, uh, maybe most of the case, most of the institution use uh, eight millimeter, I think. Hmm. Don't you think so? Yeah, I think the six millimeter. Yeah, but, you, you uh, use a six millimeter. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, this is also the, another uh, point of the chance of the cholangitis, I think. Yes, yeah? yes I think so. So some doctor recommend plastic stent, yeah, but plastic extent is I'm so afraid before fistula creation because easy to remove, easy dislocation, but just come out something. So I'm afraid to use a plastic stent before fistula creation. After fistula creation, plastic stent is okay. So now ideal stent for USHGS is not, not now. This is my opinion. Another question, what is the size of the stent? So I already use a six bore, six meter bore, and 10 over 12 cm, longer stent. But maybe depending on the situation, 
Maybe. Professor Hara, yeah. um, going back to um, uh, Dr. Sato's question yeah. about the um, location of the proximal end of the fully covered stand. Um, so I think, I think if, if I understand the question correctly, is that if you put the proximal end of the fully covered metallic stand across B2, B3, bifurcation, you would then increase the risk of focal cholangitis, right? Of the, yes. uh, of the part of that that's blockage, right? So generally when you place a fully covered stand, so you would want to be a little bit above from the bifurcation so that way you can allow the drainage of the other segment. Is, is, that, is that right? Yes. And right. Uh, there's a possibility all broke B2 and B3, something mm -hmm. B4. So left mm -hmm. row is all broke. Mm -hmm. This is a possibility. And uh, one important point, bifurcation is very hard. Wall is secret. So puncture is easy, but dilation is very difficult. Mm -hmm. So bifurcation is, a, I don't recommend puncture. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very difficult because the wall is hard. Right. Second. Yeah. So a little bit towards the peripheral. Yes. It's, it's, it's yeah. a bit better. Yes, I yeah. think so. And, and Hara, I know that you are such a big advocate for doing USBD as the primary method. Yeah. I, I I like you to comment on the um, the utility of EUSBD as a primary method for distal malignant obstruction and hyla obstruction. What do you think about it, and what do you do in your practice these days? Yes, very good question. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> lower distal obstruction, I recommend primary EUSCDS because good drainage and no pancreatitis, so, and easy. Because success rate is near, nearly 100%. And now, device, so many devices are available. We need just one, five minutes, or within 10 minutes. So, lower obstruction is maybe primary CDS is good. And the higher obstruction, this is a problem. Because the light row, USBD is not so good, in my opinion. Re-intervention is very difficult. Just put a stent is not so difficult, but the reintervention also very difficult. So higher obstruction, primary ESBD is controversial. And the operative case and the lower bioduct obstruction and the ERCP is difficult. CDS or HGS, which is better? My opinion, HGS is better because the tumor located in the pancreatic head, if you put a ESBD operation is a become difficult, more difficult, because adhesion or something. And the, if a patient needs a radiation, metal stent is not so good. But HGS, yeah. HGS is a very far from the operation area. So radiation, no problem. Operation is no problem. So HGS is better for operative patient. This is my answer. Okay. And in your practice now, you do EUS, BD as a primary method for distal obstruction. Is that right? No, 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 no not, not the clinical study, just the clinical. Right, right. In, in yeah. your routine practice. So yeah. you do EUS, yeah. BD as a primary. Yes. And would you prefer um, luminopulsing metallic stand or just a simple fully covered metallic stand? Tubular yes. versus lumen opposing. So EUS cyst drainage in the pancreas, actually is very good. But bile duct is not so big. So after big stent placement, cause a cholangitis or hyperplasia or something. So I don't recommend actuals. This, this is just my opinion. Okay. Yeah, but the longer lumen opposing metal stent, it's a good. I, I don't know. Yeah, but now small lumen opposing metal stent is not so good for bile duct. Mm. But proceed is easy because one right. Mm. Okay. Mm. Hara, sensei, yes. Dr. Hara, long axios is, doesn't mean the uh, lumen opposing, not, 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 not lumen opposing. <laughs> <laughs> Just done <that. laughs> Thank you very much. 
But for large, for very large uh, CBD, like more than 1.5 centimeters, I myself yeah. would prefer lumen opposing sand, the hot yeah. axis, the hot yeah. axis, because it's very easy to do I for a so. very large belt up. Yeah. At, at one, one problem, sometimes food inserts through the axis. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because the axis yeah. is big. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, now time is, time is over. Right. Yes. So I want to close this webinar. So today, thank you for participating and joining and the fourth discussion. Thank you for Dr. Natalie. Thank you for Dr. Kida. Yes. Thank you for joining today. Yeah. Yes. So goodbye. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so thank you nice for to see you organizing guys. this wonderful meeting. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you, Flora. Okay. See you later. Please give your comment. Look the floor. Uh, this Flora. No, no, no comment. No? Thank you. No comment. <laughs> thank you Thanks, Flora. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. See you later. Yes. Stay thank safe. you, Brian. Bye. Bye-bye.